Yeah, welcome all. It's um, great to have you here today. We're going to talk about how to provision uh, platform and apps during uh, using Cloud Foundry. I'm Guillaume Berge, and uh, this is Maven. S spell it again. Uh, say your name because I'm not sure I'll say it right. <laughs> uh, so my name is Mervan Samaratunga. And uh, do you want any questions? Yeah, and, and we'll start with a team introduction. So today we are presenting the work of a team of, a team of volunteers. Um, with been put a great effort of their time to, um, uh, to work on this. So this is Arthur, Guillaume, Janus, Jim, Maven, Samet, Xavier, and Zilin. Um, it's been great to have such a diversity of um, contributors and volunteers from different companies, as well as uh, different continents, so a free continent and uh, two time zone. So it's been challenging as well. Um, and so let's look at the agenda for today. We'll start with the why. What are use cases for using Cloud Foundry? Um, so we'll start with uh, admin and operators, um, and then app developers. Then we'll cover how is Terraform helping us with those use cases. So we'll get an introduction about uh, Terraform, model and syntax, uh, a demo, um, and then some sample configs that match those use cases. And we'll close with um, getting more um, details about uh, the implementation, what's under the hood, uh, the history about the provider, and um, what is the backlog, uh, what are we, what's all next. All right, so let's get started with the why. Um, so admin use case. Um, when, as an admin, when I receive, my, my life looks pretty much like this. I get a request from users, can you please create a space, an org, a security group? Can you publish this build pack and so forth? So it's act like this. So I go off with the CLI, I create. Uh, but when it becomes overwhelming with the number of requests they get, so it goes with feature flags, isolation segment, uh, EV groups, quotas, and all that. So as a developer, I start scripting. But then comes more requests and more consistency requests to run them in sync between pre-prod, prod, and the different uh, regions. And so very soon it becomes a headache. So there needs to be a better way of doing this. Um, as a developer, I face similar challenges. Um, the CFCLI is great. Um, it's great for most use cases. But it doesn't fully cover all of the resources I would need to provision. I cannot create a space, set user space roles, Network policies might be getting there. Uh, service instance and user provided service are not there. Um, space scope service broker are missing from the CF manifest. Um, as well, when we need to deploy a micro -based, microservice based application using um, CI CD on multiple deployments, I need to perform other activities. So let's look at them. So download the app binaries, uh, and all potential dependencies among the apps, as well as um, looking at domains on uh, each, each de deployment. Sorry. So this is why the community came up with uh, some additional tooling. Uh, you might be aware of SAP MTA or Push to Cloud um, that try to address um, those use cases, but with a different set of tooling. Another use case is sometimes I need to reference resources from uh, different system from CredHub, from application runtime, and from container runtime, and cross-link them together. And uh, I'm clueless with um, the existing CF manifest and with those other tools. So that's what uh, the prompts are trying to fix with uh, the reform. And let's look at uh, how it's helped. So you, most of us know the reform. Uh, as a way to provision infrastructure prerequisite. Um, you might be provisioning load balancers, um, networks, security groups, um, but there's more than that. And so today, we're gonna show how you can provision platforms and apps using Terraform. So we made a bit of uh, fun with the ASHICorp website to illustrate some of this. Um, so we took a, um, a search and replace from the ASHICorp website. Everywhere it's mentioned infrastructure, we change with apps, platform and apps, and we'll go through this website to illustrate uh, all the concept maps and that most concepts still hold when we provision platform and apps. So the core principles to Terraform is that, um, for those that don't know, 
It's declarative, direct declarative config files um, that are saved into Git and shared among team members. And it's really code. We are coding um, infrastructure as code. And so we'll be coding today platform as code, platform and apps as code. So there's three phases to that. So the first phase is we code, we do writes, um, config, and then we plan, um, we ask Terraform to tell us what change it would, it would be applying, that's the plan phase. And then the last phase is the create, actually we ask him to actually perform those change. So let's review that in more detail. Can I move this cursor out? Yes, be better. So on the right part, um, so we see how we um, write code using Terraform syntax. Uh, it's in Git, so I can collaborate with my team. I see history, I can put tags, version control, so uh, like we do in those code. Um, and then since it's code, I use my usual ID, so I would get um, code completion, I would get syntax highlighting, I would get uh, navigation, refactoring, everything that I'm expected to do with the uh, programming language. On the plan phase, um, so not only uh, Terraform also uh, allows me to, uh, during plan, to see how minor change might affect some other resources. So it maintains some dependency across the, the resources that we can visualize as a dependency graph, and we'll see that in the demo. Um, and so by being able to review um, the proposed change before applying them, I can do some kind of dry run, which, can, which I cannot do when I do CF push um, with a, a multi-app um, multi um, uh, manifest. Uh, it's an all or nothing. I cannot do a dry run. So Terraform allows me to do dry runs. And most importantly, it's um, consistent across those, two, those different resources. That's the same workflow I'm using uh, for all those different resources, be them Cloud Foundry application runtime that we are most familiar with, but as well with Kubernetes, with Credub, and with UA. So we'll review that. So finally, in the create phase, um, since it's all code, um, it's reproducible. And so I'm getting environment parity. Remember the pre-prod, prod, and the different region I had to keep in sync? Since it's the same, exact same code, it would run exactly the same way. Um, if I have some repeatable patterns, um, I need to repeat ever, uh, ever, over and over, sorry. Uh, like in programming language, I would extract that in function, in methods. In Terraform, I would extract that in modules that I would be able to share, share that in the open source, and run ever again and again. And again, I can combine the different uh, components together and cross-reference them. So for example, deploying um, Kubernetes to service and reference it into application runtime. And so Maven will illustrate that um, in, the, in the slides after that. Okay, so let's try to get a demo to get that more visual. And so there would be a recorded demo because I have fat fingers. If that works, yes. Okay, and maybe actually I should pause because, uh, yes, so on this demo, we'll start with the setup. So Terraf uh, download Terraform and uh, the provider. Then we'll do the right phase. Um, so configure IDEs um, to get the nice features for most programming language get. And we'll, bas we'll create uh, an Hello World app um, that's using a service instance, a bicycle service instance. We'll reduce the change, and then we'll do the apply. And so there's um, a GitHub repo you can use to just replay that at home. OK, so what did I do? Um, I just installed the provider. So you can think of the provider as mo most programming language. There is a, a runtime, uh, and there is libraries. So you can think of Terraform as a runtime. So you start the runtime. Um, on, your, uh, on your system, and then you extend the library. So the, in our case, the library is a Terraform provider for Cloud Foundry. And notice 
that uh, in the 0 0.9 version that we just released, we need to rename the provider binary to Terraform Provider Cloud Foundry. We'll fix that in the next version. So once I have this, I'm able to run um, Cloud Foundry um, uh, specifications, um, config files, and I need to configure my ID. So I got my preferred ID is IntelliJ, um, and there is great support for Terraform. Uh, with syntax lighting, code completion, navigation, um, um, refactoring, extract variables, renames, all that. So it's all great. To install that into IntelliJ, you do need the, a small quirk until we get official, until the provider gets official into HashiCorp. You need to install um, a json.schema, platform.json, sorry, in the schema directory. So that's part of the repo. And this will remove, um, be removed in the, in the future. And then you restart the ID. OK, so here is the skeleton of the spec. Just to make it fast, I, I didn't record live coding. You have a different video with live coding if you want to go more in depth. That's 26 minutes. And so we configure the library, Cloud Foundry library. And you see that we have many different libraries available. And you start seeing code completion in, the, in IntelliJ. And we'll be using today Pivotal Web Service, so api.run.pivotal.io, with a user password, which I have extracted into um, a specific a different file so that I don't leak my credentials uh, live. Um, so you see the syntax for uh, referencing variable, the dollar uh, um, with the braces var.users. And then we're going to go ahead and create a space. So let's call this space demo bezel. And uh, to create a space, I need to specify an org. So on PWS, I'm not able to create orgs with the CFCLI. I need to use the UI. So in this case, I just looked up an existing org. So see the syntax is the data source. The data source is a concept in Cloud Foundry, in, uh, in Terraform, to look up some existing resources. So in this case, we are looking at Cloud Foundry organization by its name, BRG org. And we get out of that a grid, the data ID. And again, complete code completion into uh, IntelliJ. Uh, so this space is create, it would be created with that. That's for requested state. And in add addition, I would need to add some developers. Since PWS doesn't support looking up uh, users by, na by, uh, by name, uh, I have a workaround here. I use a CFCLI to, um, to look up my user grid. And I specify user grid directly in the list of developers. But at home, on-prem, where you, your admins do give the uh, user ID uh, permissions uh, on the system, you'd be able to, to look up users directly uh, using the data source. OK, so we, we would be asking for a space. Let's ask for a service instance. And here you see with code completion the different resources that are supported by the provider. Um, so that would be a MySQL service instance, and I need to specify a service plan. So I know there is um, um, an Elephant SQL in the PWS marketplace, which is available, and I need to look up a uh, service plan grid. So there is a service plan that I know is free. It's called Total. Um, to make it brief, I didn't show the CF marketplace command in the CLI on which I looked up um, this service plan. Um, so that's how I get the service name and, and service plan. And so from this, I would be requesting a service instance of the uh, Elephant SQL service and the service plan total. And so the data source, service, uh, data source that we have on 936 is returning me the list of service plan indexed by service name. So I'm getting the service plan grid um, specified on line 42. Okay. Uh, now that I have requested a service instance, I can request an app. Um, so my app, I vendor my app um, in the, in the GitHub, GitHub repo to make it easier. So this app is from the acceptance test, the Cloud Foundry acceptance test. Just a simple Ruby app, um, hello world, and we'll be able to look at uh, variables. And to access an app, I need to declare a root. Um, so let's do that. So we declare, again, uh, the cross-reference, we cross-reference grid. So that's a root grid. So let's define a root. Um, so a, a root is made of domain, a space, and a host name. Again, I won't be creating a new domain here. So I'm looking up an existing domain. The default domain in our PWS is cfapps.io. 
so I'm using a data source, and I reference the data source in line 51. And then I reference the existing space uh, as for creation, and I specify host name, the raw TFDO. And then my app um, would like to use the service instance I created, so I specify service binding. And yes, the URL to the app, obviously. Uh, so since it's vendored in the repo, and the terraform command would be executed uh, in the current directory of this repo, um, uh, I use the file URL. So service instance. And let's look at um, a nice feature. So as, as programmer, I expect to be able to do uh, refactorings um, on my code. So basic refactoring, renaming. I don't like this Dora TF demo. Uh, would rename it. But what about uh, the cross-reference? Uh, would they all break? Or have they been updated, um, as I would expect? So I feel comfortable as a developer. I get my usual uh, refactoring to work correctly. OK, so we have our write phase, which is about to be complete. Uh, we can go to the plan phase. And actually, rather than executing the Terraform plan command, I will directly execute the Terraform apply command, but which really prompt me for uh, confirmation uh, before applying. So in the first part, uh, Terraform is a refreshing state. So it's looking up the data sources. So I ask for looking up org, default domain, and service, so doing that. And then um, Terraform is um, showing me, proposing me, um, uh, to review the resource it would create. So an app, um, the order app, and then a root, and a service instance, and a space. Do, are you willing to continue? Yes. And so Terraform goes off and creates uh, resources in parallel preserving the dependencies um, across them. So we see multi-threaded uh, provisioning. So service instance, space, root, and app. And it's going to take uh, a minute to provision. So to keep you entertained during this time, what we're going to do is look at the dependency graph. So Terraform has a nice command, Terraform graph, that would put some text. Um, to display the uh, Terraform, the, the, the graph. So it's actually the text. Um, I pipe it into um, uh, .viz and send it to Firefox. So here we see our provider, our library, which is configured with user and password. Um, and then we see the data sources that we have um, uh, configured to look up data into uh, Cloud Foundry, to PWS. And then the resources that are relying on those data sources, so space, service instance, root, app. So this way I can have a nice visual representation of the, my dependency graph, um, and I can preview uh, dry runs uh, when I make some changes. Okay, so would this Dora app be up and running? Let's check this. Uh, 10 seconds, 20. One minute, yes, it's complete. So let's look at whether it's up. Um, I need to look up the root to access it. So DRA TF demo, okay. Let's copy paste that into a browser and see if it's up. See if app.io, so I make a DRA. Yes, it's up, good. And so let's check uh, the environment variable to see if our service is bound. Uh, so that's backup services, I can check uh, whether the SQL service is bound. So yes, I see that I have a SQL service that go to Elephant SQL and um, login password. Cool. And so obviously I, I deprovisioned that, so you don't need to record the password. Okay, uh, let's move back to um, display mode with your speaker notes.
So yes, this is if you want to take more time. The, the, the slides are live, and you have the longer demo if you want to, to get more details on the coding part. So OK, let's get some more uh, examples of um, how the use cases are helped by Cloud Foundry, um, by Terraform, sorry. Admin use case uh, for application security group and isolation segment. So that would be um, a pretty simple stuff. I need to specify some uh, application security groups, two of them, uh, and run them as default and staging. So that, that would be straightforward. You'll, uh, we'll skip through the code. Another example of the isolation segment. Um, so I have an isolation segment that I call public, and uh, I entitle a Cloud Foundry organization to this isolation segment, and then assign a space to this isolation segment. So how does it look in terms of code? Um, it's very simple for security group, nothing special. And for isolation segment, the same. Um, so the org, isolation segment, the entertainment uh, uh, is referencing the org, and then the space is referencing the org and the uh, isolation segment. So no, nothing special about that. When it comes, in, it's interesting in when we are mixing different providers. So this is a more complex example of an admin use case for one of our team at Orange. Um, so they, de they deploy an app. You've seen that in the demo uh, with the root. And the service instance map to the root, which is protecting the root. So nothing special here. Um, and then they need to configure the app um, with some uh, UA client. And in order to create a UA client, they need to have dynamically a username and password. So they use Credub to generate username and password, store that into Credub, and, uh, and use that in the UA client. So how does it look like? Very similar. In the same way I was using Cloud Foundry provider for CF application runtime, I can use CredUp uh, user to provision a user, specify user, user length, and then reference, use, reference that into a UA client uh, resource um, that reference uh, um, username and password. And then this UA client can be used in my app. In this example, the app is using a user-provided service and format it as a JSON, but you can use flat environment variables and whatever. And then it's worth noticing on the app uh, that this app is deployed off GitHub. So the resources is fetch fetching the app binaries directly off GitHub uh, from the zip. So I don't have to uh, download um, the apps using a script that's done by the provider. OK, another admin um, study, admin use case of mixing different provider. In this case, we are mixing an external uh, SaaS, that's Cloudflare. So uh, some of you might know Cloudflare is, um, is helping in this case. Um, I have some, some users that are asking a new domain on my Cloud Foundry setup. And this new domain needs to be protected by Cloudflare. It might be for caching reason, they are providing content delivery network. It might be for rate limiting. It might be for analytics and uh, maybe for security as well, providing um, a valid TLS certificate. So I, I, had, I was kept um, asking for, for this by my users. So in this case, I'm using two providers, um, the Cloudflare provider, uh, which is official, which I get a record, and then I need to expose um, this DNS, uh, the FQDN, uh, and point it to, to, um, to my Cloud Foundry, and expose that to users using the Cloud Foundry domain. And uh, then the apps would be able to consume this domain uh, uh, and uh, there's a trick with uh, an empty host. So here again, we are mixing two different providers. So the code looks um, very similar. Cloudflare record, where I specify a C name. Um, and I have uh, an alias to, to go to my Cloud Foundry. And then the Cloud Foundry domain to expose that to users. And then the Cloud Foundry route. And this, since I was asked repeatedly by users to create new domain out of Cloudflare, I automated that into a service broker so that the users, instead of calling me, they can just say, create service broker, uh, create service instance, Cloudflare, specify the name of the route they want. Uh, so you might want to have a look at, um, at, this, um, at this broker. And uh, Maven, would you present yeah. uh, the use case that you have? Certainly. Uh, I'll stand close to the mic. <laughs> So uh, thanks, Pierre. Uh, so we are actually 
we are kind of, we might run over, right? Uh, so I, I have a quick few slides to go through and then I'll hand it back to Guillaume to uh, take it forward. Uh, so right now, uh, you know, I will briefly showcase some uh, application uh, use cases. So the first uh, use case describes a solution which uh, we piloted in, uh, for a telco in the Middle East. As you can see in this solution, we had a microservices landscape that worked, oops. Okay, um, excuse me while I get used to the clicker, okay. So you see this, my, uh, we had a landscape that actually was very well suited for CFCR. And these services dependent on a set of backing services that had an architecture that was uh, more sort of for you know, Kubernetes. So, so for this pilot, we deployed uh, CFCR alongside the production CFAR environment, right? And then we used uh, the uh, Kubernetes uh, Terraform provider to deploy these components over here, right? And then we used actually, uh, this is where actually I kind of uh, started working on a lot of the application and services side of the resource of the CF Terraform provider and we use that to kind of wire everything together. So the, like you saw previously from the previous slides and these slides, the power of the provider is realized when you actually bring all these multiple providers together to bring a holistic uh, solution together, put together. So the next one is uh, what you see is the high level architecture of the SAP uh, Leonardo Machine Learning Foundation. Very similar uh, requirements to the previous one as well. So you, can, you will see a general pattern in this application uh, use cases. So on the top, top part you have, uh, you see a few CF based microservices. Uh, the compute here, there are some Kubernetes based uh, services, mostly uh, services which need GPU support. And on the last, you have uh, uh, services which are running mostly in the cloud, like uh, AWS S3. So as you can see, uh, SAP needed to deploy microservice across three different landscapes, and this was only possible with Terraform and its plugins. So to do this, they used the CF Providers Application Service Resources along with uh, the resources from AWS and Kubernetes to build all of this, right, as one uh, spec. Uh, just one uh, thing as well, we, uh, you know, we uh, really appreciate, because I really appreciate uh, SAP's contribution to this, because uh, I originally developed the CF app and they actually extended that. They, uh, they found a lot of missing features which they have added to this and they're actually making it much richer. For, so it's more. Okay, so uh, this slide so sh shows you the approach taken by Orange to integrate Terraform with the uh, concourse pipelines. So in this pipeline, uh, the Orange uses the Terraform concourse resource to execute uh, the Terraform workflow. So the concourse resource is, uh, is uh, this, I mean, we talk about resources, but this is a, this is a concourse terminology. It's a way for uh, of executing the Terraform workflow. That's what the concourse resource is. And this was actually done by another colleague of mine who's at Pivotal, and it's, you can actually, uh, when you build the pipelines, you can use this resource, right? And so you, there are two steps to this pipeline. Uh, the uh, first step runs a plan uh, runs the Terraform plan to validate the consistency of the state. And the second st uh, step uh, is an apply step, which we run manually if the consistency check is good, right? Uh, once uh, this is run, the, the state, the configuration state is actually persisted to CredHub using another plugin. This is actually the beauty of Terraform is everything is pluggable, right? So it's, uh, the, so Orange developed a HTTP backend uh, a Terraform backend, HTTP backend, to store the uh, Terraform state in CredHub. The reason for doing this is that Terraform state usually maintains credentials in clear text, right? So it is important that when you persist to the Terraform state, it goes to an encrypted backend, right? So you will see uh, SAP does it a little bit differently. They use an existing uh, Terraform uh, uh, backend to actually put it into uh, uh, Vault. So you will see that in the next slide. So in the next slide, so uh, this is a Jenkins pipeline. So they use Jenkins. Uh, this is how uh, the SAP Machine Learning Foundation uses Terraform to deploy new releases to the, the, to the architecture that I showed you previously. Uh, there are four steps to the pipeline. Uh, the first one is uh, you get credentials from uh, HashiCorp Vault. And then there's an apply step. Uh, Terraform, this is where ter Terraform discovers uh, 
which applications have been updated, and then it deploys them. It also configures any required dependencies. Uh, then they run aliveness and integration tests against the functional services to see whether the integrity of the landscape has been kept. And in the last step, they uh, save the state to uh, vault, right? Again, like uh, way Orange uh, uses uh, CredUp to save the state, they use vault, right? It's an important, uh, I think, uh, uh, something for those of you who start, who, adopting, who start adopting Terraform, just keep this in mind. Like, you know, always keep your state in an encrypted backend because of this, uh, 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 because it maintains credentials in the clear. So now I will hand it back to Guillaume, who will actually talk about the past and current state of the development of the CF uh, provider. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So, yes, what's under the hood and what's the history about um, the provider? How did we converge? Did we, how do we de do uh, community convergence and uh, the detail details of each provider and uh, backlog? So, originally, uh, Orange and Archer in the room started working on the uh, Terraform provider in 2017. And uh, Maven, I think you started uh, a similar effort uh, uh, in parallel. And we actually, we met in Basel last year, and we realized that we were working on the same, same stuff. So we say, well, let's merge. Um, it, it, we, we, we'd be stronger together. And then um, the SAP team came along and said, well, uh, we can make some use of that, and we can improve it. So that was awesome contribution by the SAP team. Uh, so the team of Alert here started um, get together and uh, go in the product mode. And so we're close now to be official, uh, work with the Ashikorp team, uh, so that we become an official uh, provider um, that would uh, end up on the Ashikorp uh, webpage and releases. Um, so we hope to get that in the um, coming weeks. Um, the Terraform provider CredUp, uh, it is in production at a range, uh, but it's not official. We are, maybe we plan for official Ashikorp submission in the future. Uh, the Terraform provider UA is also used in production um, at a range, uh, but it's, uh, it's not feature complete yet. There's many stuff missing. Maybe with the new Golang UA client that's out there now, it's, it's going to become much easier. And um, the Terraform secure backend for storing credentials is still in beta mode, and we don't yet use in production uh, of the feature. Uh, on the container runtime uh, side, uh, we are using the official Kubernetes provider uh, for pods. Um, and that's worth noting as well the hand chart, uh, the hand provider, uh, which is not official, but uh, looks uh, very promising as well. And we need to better work with, um, uh, with, this, uh, with, with this repo. So let's have a look at backlog. Um, so in terms of features, we are still lacking the zero downtime support. Um, and blue-green support, uh, so some of the use case would be limited by that. Um, network policy isn't there yet, and um, uh, we don't yet uh, support the v3 API. Um, in terms of challenge that we had, um, one large challenge was um, to be able to reuse the CFCLI Golang library, Golang code, um, to interact with the Cloud Control API. The CC API is quite complex, has a complex workflows, and it's a very large effort to be able to maintain that. So we'd like to um, be able to leverage what the um, CFCLI team is, is doing. And so we'll, um, it's very promising to see this team extracting this as a library, and as well help us do the migration from V2 to V3. Um, another challenge that we had is around the acceptance test environment. So Maven's been donating his time and resources to maintain uh, an acceptance environment out of the pivotal um, um, field labs uh, environment. But it's been a lot of work, and it's not, up to, um, it's not uh, in parity with upstream. So that'd be much easier if we could get some help from the Cloud Foundry Foundation Riz integration team to get a stable uh, Riz integration uh, acceptance test environment uh, to run our automated test and to validate in incoming pull request. Some other future work, um, you've seen that uh, the Cloud Foundry app supports downloading uh, binaries out of the GitHub. Uh, we'd like to get that into a different uh, provider so that it can benefit to uh, other resources. Um, and uh, Maven some, got some crazy ideas about uh, a Bosch director uh, provider that he might be able to share after because we are running a bit of time. So um, to close, we, we would like to get uh, suggestions, comments from the community. And um, uh, if you feel like a contribution, uh, very welcome. 
And um, I think we're out of time, but we can take questions um, after the afterwards, other slide. You can reach us on Slack. Uh, we have a Terraform channel on Slack. And thank you very much for your time.